<laughs> so that's my. <laughs> Especially if the leaders give themselves a title. So, let me share something with. Hold on. Okay, I, I can let you in, Doctor. Okay. So can you see it? Can you see the can you see it? Yes. It's okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes? Yes, of course. We do. Okay, so we go. So I want to to try to introduce you a little bit to this uh, approach to the transdisciplinary fascial growth. I think that uh, through the years, all the, the different specialities in medicine has been working alone. Everybody is doing its own thing in its own field as uh, the human face or even the human being could be made in different forms or grow in the different situations. We need to grow, but we need to understand the growth of the, of the child as a unit. It's the only thing, not just as a, a sum of different networking. So the, trans, the transdisciplinary approach try to find a unique process that it that it's fulfilled with the different kind of work of different kind of specialities. So <clears throat> the term, the transdisciplinarity was introduced by Jean Piaget in 1917. And it means on the other side, other, I, I changed the word this TH, sorry, the other side of the, or true. And the discipline is an understanding, is a teaching, is an instruction. So how are we going to build or to put together all these structures that is, that is growing each day? And we need to find a way to walk through this to complete a successful growth of all those school, school bones. But in fact, those bones need to make place. The word growth means in this, in this uh, situation for me, I'm trying to explain that way, the fact to make place. You're making place to fulfill something inside. So when you are trying to grow the child, middle and lower thirds, of the face, you are building place to the growth of the upper airway. So this growth have different stages from, of course, in the uterus, but for the newborn to the 15 years old. Most of, of this time, the growth of the upper airway is taking place because you have place in the school, in the different bones that compound the face. So once we are thinking that when the face is growing, you are making place to other systems to work properly. So growth is different from development. For example, for the last 300,000 years, we have approximately the same size in our brains. So the growth of our brain has been similar for hundreds of thousands of years. But 
since the industrial revolution and all the news that technology gave to us, we are developing. We are in a really high speed develop of our understanding of things. In the same size of the brain, we today have a amazing development of understanding. So the function of growth is to make place. And the function of development is try to promote the correct function of these organs, of different organs, or different uh, approaches to see how the human is growing, the human face is growing. So to make place to the upper way, we need the growth of the facial bones and then to promote the growth of the upper way and the proper function of the respiration of the inspiratory process. So once we have in the inside place enough to our upper airway, we need to complete the outer face with the fashion muscles, those that make the showing muscles and the swallowing process. So all these muscles need to have a place to be seated. I see it, I say, I will say seated in a place and in a way that they can perform its work. So each muscle, each movement need to have a, a, a right place enough at least to promote its function. And we are in a complex system that has different temporal, temporal uh, I mean, different times. I know today you are uh, very aware of all the process of pressure and all the understanding of the fascia or the, of the model of, of the biomodic model of uh, Dr. Engelke. That's amazing for me. The first time that I, I, I was uh, in touch with his knowledge and trying to understand uh, how this bio, biofunctional model works, I realized how really important is to have enough place to perform a specific task. So the pressures that Professor is brilliantly uh, exposed has been exposed brilliantly for him need a place. And you cannot close your mouth if you had not enough breathing, nasal breathing, proper nasal breathing. Once you can close your mouth and you can really start to chew and then to swallow, if you want to have a proper swallowing, I, I, I mean, uh, not a, 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 a bad swallowing, uh, you need to have a place to put your tongue against your teeth, the third anterior part of the tongue in the palate, the donor space, and then the process of swallowing. So all these things need place. And we are talking about facial growth in the child. So for me, I want to introduce this uh, concept of a naso-oral functional unit. We cannot, if we cannot breathe properly through our nose without effort, we cannot keep our mouth sufficiently time closed to, to really chew with force. And when we are chewing that way, we are promoting for one side the growth of the bones, as the, the, the most uh, system, uh, model has been explained, we need to make a functional unit in the oldest muscles that we call the stomatognatic system. So if the nose is working properly, all the stomatic system can take place. You can chew, you can swallow, you can breathe. You're going to have a proper nutrition because we need to chew and we need to prepare all the nutrients to be absorbed throughout our digestive system. But to this to be done, you need to really breathe by your nose. So when we have, we cannot 
make a separation between one and another. And uh, as we have grown in the medicine, we as a doctor, as you as a dentist, those other specialties, we see doctors, see patients without mouth. We are not really aware of what is the stomatognatic system and how does it work? And what do we have to do as doctors to improve it and to promote it? And dentistry is looking mouth, sometimes no more than teeth. And they are not realizing most of the times what the stomatic system means and why we need to breathe to perform the chewing and the proper swallowing and then uh, the growth of the face with a, a very good occlusion. And today we are confronted, and you are confronted most of the time to malocclusion problem. We have a, this uh, described by Sandra as a pandemic, Joe's pandemic. So if we try to work together, understanding that the nose must work properly to promote the, the work of the stomatognatic system, we will continue to have all these problems in the face. And of course, a cascade of problems in position in our cervical vertebra, in the mandible, in the articulation, temporal mandibular articulation, headaches, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's a really big cascade of, of problems that has been one uh, set point that was no proper breathing, nasal breathing. So I think that we need to, to, to promote a functional trial. The nasal breathing is going to promote the sucking, the correct chewing and swallowing. And finally, we have a proper nasal breathing. We, will, we want to perform an efficient sleep. And this efficient sleep, we need to see that the face, in the face is located the promotion of respiration and of course nutrition. But in the upper side is the brain. And the brain is what make us different of the rest of, of, the, of all the world. So we need to promote the development, the neural development. For this to happen, we need to breathe, to breathe properly by our mouth, to chew, to have enough energy, and to keep our mouth closed at night. And then we are going to perform an efficient sleep. And that efficient sleep means to make, I want to, to use the, the, the example of the hardware. We have a brain and the brain is like a hardware, but this hardware have not software. The software, when you are born, you're going to make drivers, the language, the religion, customs, etc. habit. If you can imagine, a, I don't know, Cristiano Ronaldo, Messi, Beckenbauer, whatever, if they were born, in the African desert of Sahara, and their Bedouin fathers showed them to go into camels through the desert. When do they have the chance to have a football ball in their foot? So if they will never meet this simple football, they will never know that they have that amazing hardware as a football player, as a soccer player. So we need to be exposed to knowledge, to try to understand and discover what we do we have in our brains, what do we have in our own capabilities. And for this, you need to have a child that eats well, breathes well, sleeps well, and come to the school with a nice and proper habit to please listening, to, ple to be pleased learning, and to discover the values of itself. So education today is another big issue. Out of the pandemic, of course, that is a, a very, very great concern. Today and from the last 10 years, 25 years at least, we have now psychologists in schools. Why do we have a psychologist in school? Are they really promoting the growth of the child? Or are they trying to ensure that the child will be quiet enough 
to let the teachers post their, their lectures. So we have no kids coming to schools to really learn with pleasure, with a nice mood. They are in anger, they are tired, they're sleepy, they're not even enjoying the activities. And all those things are the, the why. Why I really need to work in this? Because we need to promote the harmonious growth of the middle and lower fascial tears during childhood. Because at the same time, we are promoting the cognitive and emotive development of the child. So growth and development. And if we try to put all this together, you can ask yourself why I'm going to be worried if the child sleeps well. It's not my task. I have been working for years just to promote a nice smile, have a good face, etc. Okay, you can do it. You can do it and you can just be aware then you have a very, and, and for, in, my, in my opinion, you have, a, I mean, the dentistry on all the world about uh, stomato stomatology have an amazing role in the growth of a child, in the growth of his, or his face or her face, but most of all in the promotion of the development of his cognitive abilities and his emotive abilities. So if we are expanding fields, we are so going through other things that are initial uh, speciality and that what we call transdisciplinary. So we need to, to promote a network, a transdisciplinary network. Of course, there are a lot of, I mean, they are not all there. There are enough in, in, in I mean, you can read rhinology, stomatology, obstetrics, et cetera. How this child is going to grow? I'm going to make just a comparison. Here in San Luis Potosí, we have a BMW plant and GM plant. And they are building 60, one plant 60 cars by hour, and the other one 36 cars in one hour. And they have more than 4,000 parts to put together. Of course, each part has been taken a long time to be built. It's just already there to take and, uh, and put in place, take and put in place. All these lines of production have a really, I mean, they have a nice and specific timing for each movement. We, in the child phase, we have not 4,000 units. I'm not talking about neurons, I'm talking about any, any muscular muscle cell. No, I'm talking of the 17 muscles of the tongue. I'm talking of the tongue masseter muscles. We had not 4,000 parts. And we have not a plan to really conduce the growth of this phase, the growth of this system. And to try to keep doing going well, time by time, time after time, to have an, a, a bigger performance of the human being. So I okay saying, okay, the nose is okay, but most of the time, otolaryngologists, pediatricians don't give enough importance of the role of dentistry or stomatologists. And they are wrong, we are wrong. We need to promote stomatology for the great place in the child world. So the transdisciplinary approach means we need to know, at least to know what other specialities can give to your own field. And uh, for ending this presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about my own experience. I have been, uh, as a surgeon, working particularly in child. I, I have a, a very, very important work in child, more than 16,000, 1,600 surgeries in child. And uh, all these surgeries have been most of the between three and six years old. It is really rare in this world, one surgeon that wants to promote the work of the, in the child knows. Nobody wants to work in child knows. And if the beginning of, and the continuation of life, not the beginning, but the continuation of life starts with breathing, you need to breathe. Then you need to 
eat and then you need to sleep. So you need to breathe, you need to have a proper uh, <clears throat> habit of uh, nutrition, and then you need to sleep. So nobody wants to work the nose. And if you block the nose, you have a, a chain. You cannot breathe, you cannot chew. You cannot chew, you have a bad nutrition, and you have, uh, I mean, um, you are a limited growth in your face. You have a little bit of growth in your face, and you cannot have enough place from the stomachic system. And the most notorious thing are crooked teeth. So crooked teeth are like bell, alarm bell. Along the time, when you hear the bell, you need to hide. You know the danger is around. Today, for me, the crooked teeth are the bell. There is a problem. Which problem? How are we going to solve it? How are we going to identify it? So when you work in the child nose, you're going to promote the rest of the things. But you have a nose blocked. You're not, you are not going to facilitate the other systems work. So the transit, transdisciplinary for me was a, a discovery. That's what I started to learn about stomatology. But I was before, I worked for, I was for asking from the um, uh, odontopediatric opinion. And nobody, for example, told me about the expansion. Nobody, nobody speak to me about that you have, you can work in the mouth and make an expansion and try to promote place. Nobody told me that. When I do discover, I was so amazed that see how you can move teeth in the bone. I mean, in, for me, it was I was not with this information. Today I have it. And expansion is one of another tool to be used to promote this world. But if, after I, but if I don't even know that it exists, how I'm going to consider it in my patient? And why I'm going to say or to promote in myself the thought of saying, why I'm not making a network? I need to have a network. A child needs more than just a pediatrician. Not because of pediatrician, but because all these disciplines, you cannot be aware of all these disciplines. You cannot be a specialist of all disciplines, but you can at least to know what those disciplines can to report to your work. If you're working in the, in the nose, you know how important it is from stomatology that you breathe. But if the pediatricians don't give enough importance, don't consider it relevant to send the kid, even from the born, immediately, how is he sucking? How is he sleeping? Or she? And he doesn't make relevant information for him. He's just looking from the mass index. So you are measuring our animal part our body, how is your mass index, weight, uh, I mean, length, but we need to promote a facial growth index, a facial growth index that is going to present to us a very clear idea and very clear information of how this kid is breathing, is making his nutrition system and his facial growth and how he's sleeping and three things that are going to form the human being, the human being through the human faith. So the idea to speak about transdisciplinary network is try to say, we need to promote the knowledge. How many things can we apport to this child world, but not as a confronting situation or not as an invading situation that uh, uh, it's very hard to, to explain sometimes that you cannot talk with another specialist specialist because he feels that you are invading his field. It's not the way. We need to promote the, the, the I mean the concept that we cannot know, know everything. And today there are so many tools, so many situations to resolve in the child world. But everything starts with this triad of proper nasal breathing, chewing, swallowing, a sucking, chewing, swallowing, 
and finally a proper a very quality high quality sleep so that's uh, that's the point I, I i don't know if you want to make any comment about any question anything that you want to say Sorry? No, so yes, can you hear? Yeah, yes, I can hear. Okay. Um, uh, I would like you to explain a little bit about uh, the first, the concept that childhood is uh, a very short period and it's not replicable. And then uh, Later, I don't know what questions they have, but I also would like for you to share your diagnostic protocol with the uh, vasodilator and uh, how you use, because we've, we've done the, the endoscopy this morning. So your, diag your diagnosis protocol, how you uh, present to the children from your questionnaire, your seven questions questionnaire to the, the um, the vasoconstrictor and the, the shot that you give and what your protocol is with the patient. So those are oh, the that's pretty, yes, uh, I, I, I think I understood. I mean, I have been working, uh, trying to understand this. When you have a child and you, and you see that he really have a problem, just sleep, he's moving, he's irritated, He's not making attention, his distraction. I, I'm not everybody, I mean, most of the people say, ah, because of the of the of you have uh, all the devices, electronics or Netflix or whatever. We are trying to understand, but we are asking for performance in this human being. We, we are ignoring how this human being has been armed in the process. Of 15 years. So what I do is to, to see most of all the nodes, try to see, I think that most of the big problem is the hypertrophic of, uh, I mean, uh, the turbinates are hypertrophic. And uh, we are going to, to talk other day about why they are growing that way and why this is the first time that nodes is not working properly in the human history. We never have a problem to breathe. But in the last 40 or 50 years, we have a big problem to breathe. And we have this crooked teeth and this problem in the faces that was not before. Our Dr. Engelkel or me, we were a child. We knew where the nice girl of the brass, braces live. Today, you have a big problem to find a nice girl without braces. So what is, why does it change that way? Why do we have this bad progress? And this regression in, in, in the kid's attention, in the kid's uh, performance. And the, the, for me, the answer is between, I mean, other things, the respiration. So in my protocol, what I see, I see six points. I see nostrils, septum, turbinates, adenoids, tonsils, base of the tongue. And uh, if you have, <clears throat> you have the, the lung attached. So when the, you have this, this uh, I mean, you can see that by physical exploration and X-rays. I need a panoramic extended to see the nose, not just a panoramic to see the mouth, but the nose too. I call the lateral plaque from the rhinopharyngeal space, no lateral from the neck. I'm trying to see the, the rhinopharynx. That's the adenoid place. And then the tonsil we can see through the, through the, the mouth or with the x-ray. And finally, a water, water radiology, because we have the, the I mean, the septum like this, and when you and you make water position, you can see where it's stored the septum. 
Then <clears throat> we use an endoscope to show the family how the nose is blocked. And uh, we promote a little bit of, of uh, a vasoconstrictor. And then again, the endoscope. And they see how the, cord, the, the turbinates are going to be contracted. And the kid feels. And then they do it in the fathers. Come on here. And you can feel it. Are you breathing well? Are you breathing better? Do you realize that you were not breathing as well as you can breathe? So not only the kid, but the family too. Then we come again with the endoscope and they can see what they already felt. And uh, I have had uh, my rhinometry before, but today I have not rhinometry. Then we have a questionnaire that I developed, a questionnaire of seven questions. Those seven questions are talking about how the kid sleeps through the night, through sleep, how he behaves in his, the way he sleep in the, in the day, and how he behaves in attention, in concentration, and in mood. And this questionnaire is uh, made in the test retest method. So the, the, the family answers you answers, answers out of blue. They read it and they answer. So they read the question and they say, don't, don't think too much, just out of the blue. How do you feel? Does the kid is moving at night? Yes. Yes or not? Or I don't know. And then they go to the home and they make the retest, trying to really make a nice observation and you fix a question. You have a questionnaire that has been explored two times and you have a straight answer. Yes, no, or I don't know. Even if you was observing it, perhaps you don't know. Then they come to my office and we set the problem. We have the six places of the six units to be explored. We identify where is everything. We have a questionnaire. We have already the x-rays. We have the endoscopy. We have the vasoconstrictor test. And then I used, uh, uh, <coughs> we got a deposit steroid. There are seven milligrams of betamethasone. And uh, once we make that injection, uh, intramuscular injection, I discovered that uh, by hazard, we know all that when you use a steroid and you go more than the, the normal, you have the, the moon phase. The, if the problem when you have a, 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 any, any person that take too much steroids. So why is it? Because in the v shot fat in the face, the steroid accumulates there. So we are around, around face. But at the same time, when you use uh, uh, the right amount, you have not to have this, but indirectly, they are taking the adenoid smaller and the tonsils are smaller just for a few weeks and correlated to the height of the patient. You have less than 20 kilos, you have four, more, four weeks of, of this work. You have more than 20 kilos, two to three weeks. And then you use, again, the vasoconstrictor. I use an oil in the nose to promote the humidity. And of course, you have been injected the steroid. So you block the airway. But the airway, not the airway, as all most of the people say, airway is adenoids and tonsils. No, you have a nose. And the nose have a system with seven elements in his stereo. You have a septum and six turbinates. Once you deploy the nose with the vasoconstrictor, you humidify the nose with the oil, amount oil, nut oil, and then you are making the adenoid smaller. Why it's pretty important this? Because if we know the physics of the air stream in the nose, we need to really understand how the brain goes. And we have the laws, physical laws of the flu, the fluid, the thermodynamics of the fluid. So when you are in the shorter place of the nose, there's a rhinopharynx. So 
the Venturi effect is when you have a, a hose and you and you and the water is running and you want to play and, and to just play with other guy and you want you put your finger in the hose and the jet of the fluid is going further. So you make an acceleration. That's the proportion of this side from the nose to the rhinophallus. That's the place where the venturi effect takes place. So you inject the air through the lung. So why it's important to remove the adenoid? Because you're against of this acceleration. And this acceleration is going to promote the effortless breathing through the night. We cannot make a comparison. So I, I describe national, nasal, I mean, uh, uh, nasal breathing is a night breathing. When you breathing properly at night without brain effort, just because your middle, middle brain is working properly, you need to have this injection of air. And then amygdals are in the room, in the same, the same place to go through the larynx. So, if we say, if we are at zero meters by second in the nose, once you make an inspiration, you're going to accelerate to eight meters by second to the middle of the nose, in the, in the middle turbinates, and uh, of course, in the, in the outcome of the maxillary scenes. Then you go down to six meters, and once you arrive to this rhinopharynx, you're going to accelerate to 25 meters by second, 90 kilometers by hour. Can you see the difference of the speed? It means an injection of air, because in accord to the Hagel, Hagel um, uh, law, physics law, you need you have more resistances. The resistance is uh, in the in direct proportion to the longitude. So the longer the longer side of the airway is from the larynx to the lungs. So you need to inject the air to make pressure to the air to go through the lungs. And this takes place anytime that you make an effort to breathe, you use your brain to do it. At night, you need to wake up the teeth and you have the sleep related problems. So for me, the examination means that this questionnaire is going to change. If you are moving at night, just stop moving. You stop snoring or make any effort to breathe. You wake up in other mood, but you stop to be breathing through the day through your mouth. One of the questions that they don't accept me was the shoe. The kid has take long, long time to shoe or don't like, don't want to shoe. And if every shoe is shoe with the open mouth and the mother is saying, close your mouth and close your mouth. And I said to the kids, when you come home, please take a little thing Put their in the finger in your mother's nose and please say her, close your mouth when you're chewing. So she is going to understand why you have your mouth open. And he's not doing, she's not doing that because she wants to, to, to molest yourself. It's just because she ignored it. So once you understand how much you need to breathe, uh, you understand why the kids cannot close your mouth, but it's not a question. This is not one of the of the answers, but I mean, it's not in the questionnaire. So uh, the three situations that permit is pretty important. Oh, but the, the kid is uh, with somnolence in the day, it changed too. They have a problem to really uh, do concentrated in his tasks to, they are easily distracted, it changes. And they have a really bad mood and the kids change it. I have, really amazing stories when you i said to the i said to the parents you're going to discover the kid you have at home sometimes they say really do it so they come four weeks later with the same questionnaire and they say and they told me how they change and how they back that's the second part of my exploration and the third part is surgical but the surgical uh, act has been promoted by the parent. Mm -hmm. I do never said you must make a surgery. You as a parent have to ask me 
to improve the surgery. That's my method. I don't know if I explained it enough, clearly enough. Uh, uh, is it available in the written form? Like like uh, the parts that you investigate, the questionnaire. Um, so these, these parts uh, would be very helpful to have in, in the written form, in slides or... Yes, I have not here right now. I, I, I am not prepared to do that in this moment, this very moment, but I would be really happy to share my experience because Thank you so much. We can, I, I'm going to do that. I mean, we are tired to hear we can change, we can do this, but we really can improve the child's growth. Yeah. We need to see that if you're a dentist or you're in the, in the dentistry field, and the, the otolaryngologist and the pediatrician need to understand the power and we, how much we need dentistry in child growth. Uh, and you can see, because <clears throat> it's very it's, it's curious, when a father goes to a dentist or an orthodontist, they are expecting that you do something with your cat, with the child. Are you going, you're going to put a, something here, the brace says, what are you going to do? But they are asking to do to you to put your hands and urge your stool and use your tools. But when they come to a surgeon, they're expecting you to do nothing. <laughs> so this we need to understand that. Indeed, there is no doubt, and it's a wish. Please do something. And when he see an otolaryngologist, they say, uh, "Do you need really to make a surgery?" So they're expecting you to do nothing. And they're expecting to you to do a level. So we need to put all these things in place. Uh, Jose, uh, so when it comes to surgery, uh, what kind of surgery are you talking about? So like, like uh, specifically for kids uh, in, in this term? As, as, as I said, we have six different things. The most common things are septum, turbinates, adenoids, tonsils. Less common is tongue base, and the other thing is the, the oh, I forget the name, Sandra, <laughs> for the tongue. Tongue tie. Mm -hmm. Voila. Tongue tie. That's right. So you have those six things. You can see it, the six things. So you're going to work in each one that is need to be worked. If you have a nice nostril, you do nothing. If you have a torted septum, I'm not touching, for, for example, I, I operate uh, two five-year-old girls yesterday, and they have a really tortured septum, but I don't touch it because they are going to breathe better, to chew better, and this, the, the I mean, the floor of the nose, the roof of the mouth is going to go down. And once it's go down, the septum is tortured by, because the septum is growing by itself. It has its own information to grow. But as far as the floor doesn't go down, it becomes torn. That's the natural way without harm. I mean, no, no traumatic, no, no deviated nose. It's, it's because of this. So if she have she had five years old, she's going to start to chew and to promote, and they're going to work with the with this junction, the floor is going to go down and the septum is going to be flat. So, but if you have uh, eight or nine years, I promote septal, septal surgery. Most of the time, turbinate by radio, radio frequency is just to, to, re, to volumetric reduction, then adenoid and tonsils most of the time. I would like to ask you, until what age we should expect the septum will fix by himself by doing orthodontics? I think that the first seven years are to promote growth. Yeah. Why you have seven years? You need to correct. Seven to 15, you're going to correct things. So if you have a nasal septum to be aided, in the first five years, six, seven, don't touch it. Promote the descent of the palate. But once you are in a problem, because you have a crooked teeth, you have a, you have a real big problem with the canines, upper, 
So you need to make place doing orthodontics, orthopedic treatment, and then you, we need to promote the septum because the growth is already more than 70% of the fascial growth. Yeah, so it's seven, eight years old. Like For me, it's, it's in the middle. Mm -hmm. Zero to seven, you are promoting growth. And at the same time, you are making the neural development because all the neural, we, when we are born, we are, our brain behaves differently of urbanization in the cities. First, you're going to prepare the field and you're going to put the water system and drain system and light system and whatever, and then the houses. When our brains born, they are already all the houses and they are going to promote the urbanization interconnection. This interconnection takes place from zero to seven years. And then you have a neural nucleus, but separated nucleus. And at seven years, it becomes just one brain. So if you want to promote the brain growth and to promote the amount of neurons to be connected and to form uh, these uh, centers, neurological centers, you have seven years. So it's a very important time to the facial growth, to the neural development, and of course, the kid is exposed from socialization in the school. And he is, as I said, tired, angry. How are you going to be to, I mean, the first seven years of age are absolutely decisive in the rest of life. Of course, you can do too much work after, but if you have a, the best uh, start, I, I said, uh, I, can, I, can, I put an example. Every, every people is asking for the performance of a car. But if you don't go to the factory and you don't see the precision of every system is putting in the same stage and is working together at the same time, then you have the performance. So we left the child to grow in a wild. If he breathes, it's okay. If he is breathing less, no problem. Croquetids, oh, no problem. There, we, we put braces after you're not promoting the correct start in this in this construction but you want performance so we need just to change because we have been formed as a doctors to try to correct problems we are disease specialists and this field is to promote growing we are talking about functions we need to promote functions and not to correct problems. Yeah, just uh, one question for you. Uh, yeah. I'm, uh, I would like to know if the, the, the observation of nasal breathing can be done in a better objective way when uh, using the vacuum activator. The vacuum activator gives us the opportunity to uh, con control the block of the nasal breathing for definite time. So uh, the idea is to use the active, uh, vacuum, vacuum activator as a diagnostic tool in order to observe if there is a decrease of uh, oxygen saturation during, during a time, maybe five to 10 minutes. Uh, when blocking uh, the oral respiration, uh, what's your opinion concerning the, this uh, evaluation? And uh, if you could uh, give us uh, your idea, how much time would you expect to need uh, to uh, differentiate between the, a reduced nasal breathing with completely closed mouth? I think I need the first, my opinion first, my first opinion is I need to really know the system and start to working with an understanding and promote its use. For me, it's clear that my task is sleep. Sleep. I cannot correct behave. I cannot correct smartness. I cannot correct this because we have an, a, a very short period of time. We can make surgery in a 40 years old person, but we cannot reconnect the brain. 
So for me, all the techniques, the devices, and of course, I, I would be really pleased to prove this. If this helped us to promote nicely, we really have to, uh, done our, our task, our main task. So yes, I, I will be very pleased to, to use any tool and to... I think he meant a diagnosis in the office. If they can, uh, with the vacuum activator, if you can check if they're... Uh... I, I, as I said, I need to have one and not to judge it, to learn how to use it and to take out all the advantage that it maybe, and of course, it. has. I, I understand, I mean, I need to understand all the data. <laughs> I, I have, I, I, you give me, and I start to use it, but I need to learn to understand more. I need to really understand that, to feel that I'm using properly. For example, uh, Edith Fass, she has been using that, and he's very, very, very happy with. So yes, I, I'm, of course, I, I'm going to give big value of all this, and we, we need to incorporate that technology to all this tool, that diagnostic tool. And as I said, most of the people said, we are going to re-educate. And I said, no. <laughs> we start, we learn to chew in a bad way, to swallow in a bad way. No, please don't reinstall it, create a new way. We need not to rehabilitate, we need to habilitate a new way. And this, uh, this, uh, this um, promoting of, of uh, vacuum is going to promote the build of a new neural way to move your tongue and to use all your stomatic system. Okay, so I think uh, it should be very helpful if we could, uh, if we could me personally, to talk about this. Uh, Absolutely. Yes, because uh, there is a, some limitation in the, the transmission of uh, ideas and transmission of, uh, of methods. Uh, one can uh, present uh, the procedure, for example, the procedure of measuring, and um, it is even better to, to be understood. And uh, so we may have uh, a lot of ideas from uh, experienced clinicians in order to how to use uh, a new device. Okay, uh, Dr. Engel is coming to San Luis. Okay, I arrange it. You're, you're welcome. Everybody is welcome, but you, especially Dr. Engel, you're welcome here, of course, with Sandra and every one of you. But I would say that's why I'm talking about transdisciplinary. Before this time, I mean the last years, last four years, I improved surgery and goodbye. And today I said, no, you need to go to change habits. You need to see this, you need to improve that. This is trans transdisciplinarity. I'm not talking to the orthodontic pediatric to say, you must do that and that. No, I said, I have a child. I saw this crooked teeth, please make an evaluation. How do you think you want to make space? I have a, a, a girl I saw yesterday, past, just past yesterday. They have 50 years old, you will, you will see her, Sandra, when you come to San Luis. And they are saying they need to remove 15 years old, nine, nine dental pieces. Oh. Why? Why nine? You have the four uh, ju uh, molars, you have the four molars, because they have no place and, you, and they are really bad. And they said, uh, for the first time I, I will, I think you must do is to take out this four. And then you have to understand you have enough place to move the rest. But nine, give me a reason. So I'm not saying to the dentistry how to work, but I said, no, please stop. I'm going to send you to someone and can understand better this way. Yeah. And we are going to work together. That's transdisciplinarity. Not to say or to dictate rules, but to share fears, concerns. But I cannot be as I was. I have 30 years working here in San Luis Potosí. The last uh, 16, uh, 14 years, I worked isolated, doing my work as ENT. 
And today I work with a network as, as we must work. And as I think that I promote that and I, I hope uh, I give you just uh, another view of how far you, you feel can, how far can you go in your field in promoting this child growth, health, health, no correcting disease, no correcting problems, but guiding to right road. Well, wow. <laughs> I, I have a question when it comes to the network. Uh, you, uh, I mean, uh, where do you draw the line? Because you have people uh, working with the brain connection to uh, to the jaw, uh, the, the linguistic uh, uh, people working with the, uh, how how people talk and stuff. So it's very difficult. And, and you somewhere you realize, okay. Uh, if we should uh, make uh, the understanding of the mouth the gateway to our personal system, like uh, where shall we, uh, who shall we exclude and who shall we include? I think that we are, as, as everything that is born in, as an idea, mm -hmm. need to be tried and then used and they perfection and then you have the, the best model. So we want to start just making people feel the need to go further. And we need to make courses, some courses uh, or different teachings in different weeks to talk to all those different specialities. Not even all one are doctors. Psychologists are not doctors, nutritionists are not doctors. So people that is uh, participating in this health role. Yes. And uh, at least they have a minimum knowledge and minimal understanding of how the institute doing, is going and why they need to have a team to work just to make a better work. But as you said, uh, we need, we are just starting. We need, I have six months working here with this team. And once Sandra be here in September, we're going to reunite all the girls there. I'm very happy because I have 17 girls working for me, so I'm happy. I'm, you know, I, can, I, can, I can fit my chest with. So, yes, yes. So, when they come here, we are going to you to see how has been working this last six months as we never did before. And we are the first test of. Uh, how the doctor explains, how the family feels, how the dentistry feels when a father says, oh, you are just trying to, to make an experiment. No, no, we are putting together work that has been done for a lot of time. But they perceive the perception of the fathers was that I was trying to make an experimental work. So the, the way I, I was talking, was not proper. <laughs> so we need to improve, but we need to go ahead. Uh, may I have a very provocative question? So like, uh, yeah, oh. so, so you have a team, uh, 17 girls, whichever uh, specialties, but it sounds- No, like only, only, they are only uh, stomatologists and pediatricians. Uh, anyhow, pediatric, anyhow. pediatric dentist slash orthodontist. Mm -hmm. okay. We need more people. But oh, go ahead, excuse me, go ahead. Listen, but, but so far it sounds like an interdisciplinary collaboration, like in general. So what, what is the, uh, the value added that makes it transdisciplinary instead of interdisciplinary? So because, because, because yes, yes uh, we need to have a, a stronger collaboration. This is even better if we have every specialty in one uh, place. Uh, we improve the communication level, so, 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 but what, what makes it uh, to another level to, to be called transdisciplinary instead of interdisciplinary? Yes, the answer is, 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 is absolutely correct. The fact is, I know that, uh, for example, I know that this is a, a, a machine to make uh, the junction. But if I don't know what does class two means, open byte means, if I don't know what does it mean, how I'm going to understand that I need this work. 
So interdisciplinary, I, as, as all of the pediatricians do, they send the, the kid to the otolaryngologist to see the opinion. And the otolaryngologist, that is okay. If you have information, you say, no, it is not okay. This kid is not breathing properly. It's not okay. Why? Because I know turbinates and I saw it. And I have this questionnaire and it told him, it's telling to me that he's not breathing well. Why you tell me that he's breathing well? Ah, because I am a specialist. Oh, I need to see another one. <laughs> and uh, if you have a, a, a class three, or if you have a, a, a close by, and I don't know what does it mean. I just don't know what does it mean. So transdisciplinary means at least to understand your conception. Why are you called this class two? Think a dive into the other profession. Yes, but but you know it is just a matter of playing with words. Like like uh, when I learned this kind of definitions, this was the differentiation between uh, multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary. So multidisciplinary when uh, there are a couple of specialists working on the same patients and they send to each other, but they are not collaborating. So interdisciplinary the way when we develop the treatment plan together, we develop the treatment sequence together and we educate uh, each other. So this is interdisciplinary in my understanding. So transdisciplinary, again, in my understanding is the one that when we bypass some of the specialties because, uh, because when uh, we start working together, it is, uh, it will come to the point that when we don't need any specialty, which we used to need, because uh, we can collaborate so effectively that we don't need like orofacial, orofacial therapists. Like <laughs> so, this is this is transdisciplinary to me. Like like there is a new technique which like substitute uh, substitutes some some pro uh, formerly existing specialty because because uh, well at a certain point. Uh, it will come very uh, clear to all of us, like including the patient, that it is impossible to go to multiple places uh, from from the logistics and from the financial. Let me let me read you the the Harvard School of Public Health. Yes. Oh, give me please accept me because my battery is dying, so I'm going to enter by my phone. Uh, yeah, be <laughs> my computer battery is dying already. Great. Uh, should I read the definition or you're going to say something? Yes, go ahead. Just give me okay. the enter to my phone. Ah, okay. Give me the permission to go in. Okay. So if battery dies, I will see here, through here. <laughs> we are about to let you go anyway. Okay. So the. Let me, I'm going to start here. Yeah, just put mute in one of them. Okay. Okay, go ahead. This is, I'm going to read you the Harvard School of Public Health defin the definition. There, the, res the efforts conducted by investigators from different disciplines working jointly to create new conceptual, theoretical, methodological, and translational innovations that integrate and move beyond discipline specific approaches to address a common problem. So, so that's not interdisciplinary. With this, yeah, that, this, yeah, this is what I understand. So this is this is the main step that uh, so well. This is a new way. It's no, you're creating way, but, a new a new, a new, um, new protocols, new directions, new approaches mm -hmm. to common problems. So you're not integrating different things. You are creating new protocols that are not there before. Yeah. Yeah, yes, I, I will say something very, very clear. It's absolutely false that even in hospitals, people are taking seriously the opinion of others. I'm not talking about cardiologists or pneumologists. I'm not talking to people with an infarction. No, I don't know any pediatrician that takes seriously the opinion of a dentistry. I don't know, You're even one. So if you write, you achieve it, that the pediatrician takes the information seriously and try to understand information, you're making a change. You're improving a system. You're promoting a new way to work. And this is transdisciplinary. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, but I mean, because this does not, this not exist. Sometimes, as I, I want to tell you, for example, in Spain, 
Christian. He, she, he is an, an otolaryngologist, smart one, and he knows so many things. But Spanish laws not allows him to operate the nose. Yeah. There is no discipline. So you go to see the opinion of someone that is not going to do nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's just visit, pay, and goodbye. What does he say? We need to deblock the nose. When? Uh, you cannot deblock the nose here because child, we're not allowed by law. So sorry. You don't need nothing. You don't do nothing. You're just visiting people. That's for me, that's in the interdisciplinary. He's just looking, taking opinions by. But if you want to be new ways of work, just I put a question on the table. Do you think that could be most important for child growth and development to have a really facial growth that, uh, uh, I mean, um, the body, the mass index. Do you think that the facial growth index could be better than a, 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 a body index? Sure. This, this is a change and it does not exist. It does not exist a facial growth index. We're working it, trying to, to I mean, to <clears throat> awake the people to see I, it's very important to grow to the face. No, how long time you're measuring the bone, the crane, the cranial, the circumference. How, how many changes does it have from eight to 15? One millimeter? So how information does he give to you of the brain function? Or how are you sleeping? On how are you learning? But you support, and you can see it in the OMS, in the um, <clears throat> general medicine all around the world, they accept the way to conduce the child's growth, measuring his weight and his length. And the fashion, this is not we ignore it. This is not part, I don't, I don't hear. Uh, which part? What do you say, Sandra? What do you say? Part of creating these uh, new indexes and new protocols, I said is Nobel Prize material. I said that since I heard you speak the first time. We, we, we're trying to, to say, why we do, I, I don't want to use the word change. I'm saying that because we have a Swedish uh, opinion leader here. Yeah. He Good. might have a, a hand in the Nobel Prize uh, selection. Good. <laughs> so sometimes sometimes when, when, when you say change, when you say change, it's because something is wrong. But you must change. When, when you say improve, you're going to add something. Because the work that dentist has been done, making uh, <clears throat> the work in the teeth is not wrong. It's what they do, and perhaps they did it very well. Mm -hmm. But you can improve if you put the kid to breathe properly. Mm -hmm. And if you think about the sleep, why a dentist is going to think about the kid's sleep? Uh, that, that's a change. Is that, well, well. I don't, I know that it's very limited time. So, so the, my point is that, that uh, the reason why we are here and the reason why we are talking about this is the, uh, the fact that we are the first who uh, recognize the importance of what we mean by multidisciplinary or multifactorial disease. So actually, so far in orthodontics, in medicine in general, multidisciplinary or no, multifactorial etiology was only used for uh, excuses like when we failed in a unidisciplinary way then we said okay this is uh, this can be for different reasons we did our best but uh, if we take multifactorial as a fact into uh, seriously then it comes to the point that that we are facing the same issue like like free view from the nose uh, people from the neurology we are from malocclusion. This is the same story. So this is about the health of the deterioration, deterioration of the uh, growing nation. So actually, this is about health. So this is why, actually, I have been stressing a new definition: so cranial facial functional medicine. So this is this is this is what I mean by transdisciplinary. So this is more than orthodontics, more than uh, EMT, more than neurology in general, because we are dealing with the same issues, like like from some, some, some sort of epigen, epigenetic issue because of the food, 
because of the breathing, because of the lack of oxygen of the pregnant woman, because of many, many things, but we face with the same problem. And you know, this is a sick blind man and the, and the elephant story. So, so we we recognize this is the minority of, of each specialty, but this is somehow a medicine, cranial facial functional medicine. So, and then we can move it into a greater medicine like functional medicine. This is how I believe because if we name it, so there are many names, names like uh, orthotropics, ALF, but it is it is not naming the real issue. This is about health. So you are. Uh, 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 Griffin uh, is one of the uh, persons who mentioned the general health and Marisol's lecture was about general health. So we are talking about the health. So this is the new thing for an orthodontist. So this is my uh, a job of an orthodontist will matter because we are working on the health of the patient. So this is this is what we should name. Uh, but anyways, sorry, sorry for this interruption. I think, I think that when, when you say that uh, we are it's talking about the same. I mean, it's not just semantics. It's just that we are, in my mind, I want to promote the learning beyond your field. Mm -hmm. And one of each one of your collaborators are going to understand your language because they know what you mean when you say class two. This for me is to go through another knowledge try to achieve a knowledge that I have not the need to have in my speciality. So not just, I mean, I, I think that it's very important to have more and more people thinking than the, the 21st century, we need to promote health and health begins in childhood. And childhood, every said, everybody said, are you going to make surgery in this child? This is very, very little, it's in a small child. And so how much I want to wait from this child to grow? I need to go, even if he, I have the, the, the child that I put my hand as I, I'm a little bit, she was, he was intubated in, in the UC unit four days. And they make a surgery of turbinates in a four days kid, in a face like that. So he did to breathe. He was intubated. He was a congenital turbinate hypertrophy. So you need to work with. So there is no age. So it is just function. So for me, 21 century is from functions. And we have enough machinery, enough technology, technology to demonstrate that the problem is already there to find and to use these tools, not just as disease diagnostic, but as a promoting tool to health growth. I, and I think we are talking the same thing, perhaps with just semantic, or my English is not as good as yours, but I'm going to try to say, if we just put the idea to work and try to improve groups of persons, of professionals, trying to understand better the work and the meaning of the others, the speciality, for me, that's the trance is to go further than just inter or multidisciplinary. Question, how will, how can you overcome the semantic cleavage between the disciplines? Talking between us, <laughs> trying to, to find, the, as I said, if a world change, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the correct manners, there are form, the form that is plain and the, the meaning that what you are explaining. And sometimes if you're not dressed properly, you lose your chance to speak, for example. So we need to put together form and the final thought. We need to, to pass through the formality of the speech to the under, deep understanding of the meaning. And for or to achieve this, we need to exchange ideas and we need to put the best way to explain because at, at the end of the, of, the, of, the, of the day, you and I, we are trying to promote the child growth. We are trying to promote health, not to come from disease to health, but to newborn or even to conception, to a nice and proper and healthy growth. 
Okay, with that, I think we can uh, close this session and let you go start your day. Thank you for getting up early for us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. I, 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 I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And, and we need to continue to in exchange. Yes. The, and, to, and, and I need to know your work and, and just to feed from the work of every one of you. Thank you very much. Yes. My pleasure. I have a, a, oh, I have the session, Marisa's session was fantastic. And I have the, the endoscopy for you to watch. Uh, it's taped. Thank you. We want to perform here. And we thank you here, Dr. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Gracias, Andrea. Chao. Bye. Okay. So we got five minutes time to get a cup of coffee before okay. Dr. Nerves. I, I hope you guys enjoy him. I think he's fantastic. That four, four day old baby was lucky, eh? Oh, my God. <laughs> to have him walk to the same hospital where he was born. Because I don't know, would you operate on a four day old? <laughs> I think yes? that the bone I did a uh, newborn, uh, not a cleft, uh, the newborn, the only one that I got initially from the birth was a uh, Pierre Robin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they did the distraction, distraction, distraction from that moment. Mm -hmm. He had a mask, distraction right there. Mm -hmm. And somebody was ready to do tracheostomy right there. And they just, uh, yeah. and we handled it, we put the distractor. It's the only one mm -hmm. I ever seen from birth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there any statistic on uh, oral disabilities and other health disabilities like brain uh, medical uh, disabilities or heart disabilities? This is the same. 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 This is the same.